Hello everyone, my name is Alex McElvride and in this tutorial we'll be looking at how to create some realistic lighting using HDRI rather than the internal lights that Blender has. So for the sake of simplicity I've created a plane, a cube and a sphere which will pretend that are our models that we want to light up. So as we said, when you load up Blender you get a default light which is a simple light that's um, what's the terminology used for it? just a simple lamp so what we'll be doing is we'll be deleting it so you right hand click onto it and delete it we're not going to be using any lights whatsoever the problem with the lighting is that each individual light that you pick from sure you can change the coloring but you can only select one color per light in real world conditions I mean lighting comes from the blue sky from the clouds from reflections lighting bouncing off buildings of different colors and so forth so there's a vast array of different types of lights that create the the realistic lighting that we see with our eyes and that's exactly what we're going to try to replicate here so in this tutorial we're going to be using um, cycles rather than the blender render up here where my cursor is we're going to choose cycle render uh, the next step is to go into the nodes. Now I know using nodes can be a bit tricky and a little bit daunting, but l let's try it out anyway. So once we go into the once we pick cycle renders, we come down to the nodes here. Make sure that this is checked. Use nodes because if nothing shows up, check use nodes and hopefully something will appear. The next step is to click not on the uh, the, the, the what we call it here the object shaders but rather the world shaders here. The reason we're doing this is because the HDR map that we're going to create is going to be the background um, that's going to be used as the light source. So once you click use nodes and the world node and select the world node as we've done here you will see on the node editor you'll have background and world nodes as two nodes that have popped up by default. That's fine, that's great. What we need to do now is to go into a website say and pick a HDRI map a lot of them are cost a bit of money some you can get for free and I've used this website here called hdrmill.com forward slash freebies dot htm now I'll add this link to the bottom of the video in the description so you can get direct access to it and what I've done is I've just downloaded this map here where my cursor is and once I downloaded it I simply stuck it on my desktop just for ease of access which is right here let's go back to the model and the first thing we want to do are add some new nodes so what we want to do is go to textures environment textures and add it and we'll place it here to the left this is where we're going to add our HDR map onto it so what we want to do is link everything up. So link color to color and add the HDR map which I have put on my desktop. You might have it elsewhere on the computer. So let's add it. Now in Blender they've got something called rendered which is basically something that renders in real time. So let's click onto that and you can see that the model is rendering in real time in, in real time unfortunately my laptop is a bit slow so it's not going to render very quickly so there might be some times when I need to pause the video to complete the render but what I wanted to show you here is if we zoom around we can see the HDR map on the background in 360 degrees so that's where the light is going to be hitting and then coming towards your model to give you a realistic look so that's the first step now sometimes well what we need to do here to make it a little more realistic and this is based on Andrew Price's uh, videos he's, uh, he's basically a blender guru in fact his website is called blenderguru.com and he's got some amazing information about how to create these videos and this is based on his recommendations so what we want to do here is we want to add converter math place it there and we want to select multiply we then want to add another one converter 
math and then we leave it on add so we've got multiply and add and now we join them up now you may ask why have we done this now the first multiply one that we've added this one here where my cursor is is basically to create some sharp lights sharp lighting and the second one that we've created is basically to create a soft sky type lighting and apparently this is what is used to create a more realistic light type now we can zoom into our model and wait until it renders up a little bit and unfortunately it takes some time so what I'll do is I'll pause it until it renders and then I'll come back to the video okay we're back and this is what the render looks like at first glance you look at it and you think right it's not any better than say using normal lighting on blender render so it doesn't look so great yeah that's true but let's advance on a little bit more to to explain to you how you can make them look a little bit better first and foremost you can see a lot of graininess it's a bit grainy right so what you can do is go to the um, the render icon here on the left hand side uh, on the right hand side where my cursor is click onto it and down here where you see sampling you can see samples where of where my cursor is now you've got render 100 and you've got preview 10 now the render 100 is basically when you actually render your image by pressing F12 or by simply rendering it the traditional way that you know of the preview at 10 is when you physically go onto the live rendering where it renders in real time. So that's actually rendering with samples of 10, which is quite low. So if you increase that, you can get your live rendering to be far more um, advanced and less grainy. But the problem with that is it takes time. It takes longer time. So we tend to keep that low, and we tend to then just go and render it in real time. Uh, we tend to then go and just render it the normal, traditional way. So, what we've got is this render. Yes, a little bit boring. But you can see some potential. You can see the actual shading. It's looking a bit more realistic. It's less, it's less than, it's, it's, it's not so much of a, a, a big black blob. It's a nice shade, so you can, you can actually see there's some potential there, and, and we're, we're actually moving in the right direction. So the first thing I would do is I'd bung up the renders, the rendering to about 100 or 200, depending on how sharp you want your renders to be, and do a physical render by either pressing F12, which is what you see on the screen right now, or by simply pressing the render button here. And this is what we have. So how can we better this? All right, um, it's a good question. One thing I would say right now is that the lighting is a little bit dark and what we can do to actually increase the lighting a little bit is we can go to these math nodes that we've added, the multiply and the add one, and we can increase the value. So I'm just going to go and increase it to one, increase it to one, and then I'm going to render it one more time and I'll come back to you when that render is completed. Okay, we're back and uh, we can see now that the render is a bit more brighter than before. But yet, there's still a lot of noise uh, on the render, and it does make it look quite ugly. So as I said before, when you go to the render panel here, you can bung up this value to a higher value to make it look a little bit, uh, to, to, to reduce the noise. But there's also another trick that is currently available. I think it's a new feature in Blender. By going into the world panel here, you've got multiple important samples, and then it says map resolution. So basically, this is applying more, um, I guess it works in the same way as samples on the render, but it's actually applying it to the map itself. So if you select, check that checkbox, and bung it up map resolution to say 2000, and then we go and render the image one more time, it will take some time, so I'll pause it and I'll come back to you. So we see now that the noise has been greatly reduced by bunging up the map resolution and also playing around with the render samples. So you can do a combination of both until you're very happy with the actual render and the, the reduction in noise. So 
again it looks a bit plain it's not the best looking render but still let's take it one step further to demonstrate the the lighting and how it's actually how the HDR lighting helps and makes it look a lot more realistic than just using the lamps and what we're going to do here is I'm going to come out of the render mode go into just solid mode so now I'm back into the just the the normal object mode where I can edit and what I want to do with this sphere I right hand click on it to select it go into materials add new and all I'm going to do here is select I guess glossy which makes it a reflective material a bit like metal and I'm going to change the color to a sort of grayish color like so and right now I'll actually make it a little bit more gray and what now I'm going to render it one more time and come back to you and look at that all we did was add a glossy effect onto the sphere with a slight gray tinge and we have replicated what looks like a metallic ball bearing and why this is happening you can look at the actual sphere itself and it's reflecting the HDR map that we've put in the background and that is why it looks very realistic because it's actually replicating real life situation where everything is reflected by its surroundings rather than creating lights and placing them to different parts of the scene and you can see that if you start building up your scene and start adding more materials and different well basically materials that your your object will start to look your scene will start to look a lot more realistic I mean we can take it one 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 stage further and uh, let me edit the, the cube now add a material what are we gonna add I have no idea um, let's try well I don't think the glass will work so well because it's, it's a cube but well, well let's try it uh, we've got glass let's make it a bit rough and the IOR let's just leave it as it is and let's render and see what happens I'll pause it for the time being until it completes okay we're back uh, admittedly the cube glass doesn't look that great it's a bit difficult to replicate glass and there's a few tweaks that you need to do but I think you get the gist here I mean if you just follow these nodes down here and apply them to your background scene whatever material you start to add on to your actual models will start to have a, a little bit of a more realistic look because of the the way that blender is replicating real-life conditions by adding those HDR maps and adding these this nodes these nodes here and by doing so hopefully you'll be getting your scenes to look a lot more realistic and more pleasing to the eye I hope this has come in handy and if you've got any questions, it's been a while since I've done some videos so I might be a bit rusty and jumping around all over the place but please, please, please feel free to leave any comments on my Google Plus account and I'll do my very best to answer you back. Take care and have a great day. Bye bye.